very good afternoon and welcome to The Nation. I'm Tamina Kaosji in our studios here at Banama. And today we have a very special guest in-house to talk to us about rainwater collection. And we have with us today Yasmin Rashid, who is the chairperson of the Malaysian Environmental NGOs, or Mungo. Welcome to Studios, yes. Hi, Tamina. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Our pleasure. <laughs> so before we get started and get down to the details and the nitty gritty, mm -hmm. can you start off by telling us a little bit about your background and what is it you do? Um, well, a little bit of that goes back a long, a long way back. Um, I'm a marine biologist uh, right. by, by profession. Uh, I've also dabbled into the world of biotechnology where I got my master's. And uh, even till today, I'm still back in school again, hopefully trying to finish my PhD. All right. Um, well looking at the effectiveness <laughs> of NGOs in community development. I see. And uh, for today, I'm wearing mm -hmm. my hat as the chairperson of Malaysian Environmental NGOs. Right. Okay. So now, what exactly is it that uh, Mungo does? And what is Mungo's role amongst the NGO scene in Malaysia? Right. Um, Mungo was actually established in 2001 mm -hmm. um, by the mm -hmm. Malaysian government uh, with uh, funding from the Danish agencies um, to kind of get all the social and environmental NGOs on one singular platform so that our voice is strengthened and we can actually work um, more strategically with government agencies or ministries to address things related to environmental policies, laws and legislations. So we are a coalition mm -hmm. uh, and we are made up of um, many local and international NGOs. Um, and to date, we have 26 members. We are member, mem member driven. And um, my aim is uh, to foster better working relationship with government agencies uh, so that the issues of environment, conservation and sustainability um, addressed uh, adequately. Right, so basically you're sort of like the hub for all the environmental NGOs and you help to just expedite everything. Uh, well, yeah, we, we are like the, you could say we're like a mouthpiece. Okay, um, right. And then uh, we, our, our key mandate is to bring uh, issues from grassroots societies uh, up to the relevant agencies so that we can address it more holistically and integratedly. Right, yeah. okay. So, so far, um, part of what the projects that you've been working upon is the waterfall sharing campaign, yes, which is what the setup program. that we have mm -hmm. in-house in our studios is today. Yes. So, this year is the second year that Mungo is working in collaboration with Laniche, which right. is a cosmetics company. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of this collaboration and how did it come about? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is one of my favorite programs and campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, early last year, we got connected uh, with the general manager of Laniche, uh, Margaret, and we were um, quite interested to find out that um, you know, most, most beauty brands, as you know, uh, rely on quality ingredients. And Naturally. one of the key ingredients in most of these products is absolutely clean water. That's right. Um, it's always the first ingredient, aqua. Yeah, so aqua is always the go. first ingredient. And um, not just beauty products. I think there are other products out there that actually um, depend on clean water. And uh, we were made aware of what um, Laneige was doing in Korea. The brand originated from Korea That's right. um, in terms of how it was mm -hmm. contributing back to society and how many of the ingredients that they use in their products are actually obtained from community farms like the green tea and so forth. So we were very um, amazed and um, uh, of their efforts and when they were thinking of starting a corporate social responsibility program in Malaysia. Right. Um, their <laughs> mandate was to look into where are the areas or communities in Malaysia which are having issues related to water mm -hmm. which they could support or contribute in partnership with a local NGO. Right. So we're very lucky to be selected by mm -hmm. Laneige Malaysia to work with them and last year um, we shared the idea about um, providing rainwater harvesting systems to marginalized communities, in this case, um, orphanages. Okay. And um, it was quite apt because last year, sometime March, we had 
a big water crisis That's in right. the Klang Valley. Water shortages all over, and everybody was complaining. And of course, right. very you know. So if you and me were affected, absolutely, uh, you can imagine the beneficiaries or orphans right. that live in orphanages, because an average orphanage would have between twenty-five to thirty um, orphans, That's if right. not more. You know, mm. especially the bigger ones. So last year, in lieu of the water crisis, and also with this focus on water, we felt that. Um, it was would be a nice working relationship uh, mm -hmm. to to kick off with in terms of um, raising funds, of course, through the sales of certain lineage products, and um, the funds were channeled towards three homes last year, and right. we've already built <coughs> and installed uh, rainwater harvesting systems in these three homes. Because of the success of last year, and we also gathered quite a lot of support from the public. Because a lot right. of the public actually sign up to volunteer for us oh, okay. in these Wonderful. homes when we were doing the installations. Okay. And um, we decided to renew our relationship again this year um, with the same campaign. Of course, different products are in place. Right. Um, and we were very ambitious. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we can achieve a target. So last year we did three homes. Okay. This year we're doing six homes. The target is six. Okay. Most of the Wonderful. homes are slightly bigger um, in terms of your operations and size as well. Right. Which also means that they definitely have a much higher need for clean, higher usage everyday, of water, portable yeah. water. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So it sounds like a very. It sounds like a wonderful initiative, mm -hmm. but. Basically, um, let's try and inform our audience a little bit about right. the rainwater harvesting system. Mm -hmm. So we've actually got a video that we can play. Yeah. Um, so let's just check out the video first, and mm -hmm. when we come back, we'll discuss it in deeper okay, detail. Okay, sure. Okay. So that's a really wonderful short introduction to what the rainwater harvesting system is. Yeah, it's right. a very simple system and I think the one that we watch in the video, um, if you notice, doesn't require any usage of any pumps. Which that's right, no mechanization. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's a gravity, um, uh, it's a water rainwater harvesting system that works based on gravity. Right, yeah. okay. So that would, I suppose, make it far more cost efficient than the other models which are available yeah. out there? Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't use uh, electricity, so right. you don't have the burden of paying uh, additional like, energy bills. That's true. Um, number two, maintenance wise, uh, it's cheaper, because if anything happens to a pump, you would need to have substantial amount of money to put a new pump to replace it. That's right. So in this case, um, it's a very simple mechanism, uh, and every surface that you see is the potential rain harvesting system. That's so true. in this case you saw it um, from the roof. It's a matter of having a um, efficient gutter system and piping. Um, and if you saw earlier on the first five ten minutes of rain water is not 
being ch channeled to the tank. Right. Reason being is in being in Klang Valley, the first 10 minutes of rain is normally super acidic. That's true, and washing of all the dirt. Yep, yeah, and it captures all sorts of um, dust particles in the air. Right. And at the same time, especially if you're coming from the roof, you may have dead leaves or dried leaves or anything True. from the roof. That's so the right. first 10 minutes is normally flushed out. Ah, and right. uh, after 10 minutes, uh, the pipe kicks in and it will then channel it to the, the, the tank. Right, so it's a smart system as well in yeah. addition to just not harvesting the rainwater. Mm -hmm. Right, so it sounds wonderful. Now um, let's get back to the collaboration between um, Laneige and um, Mungo. Mm -hmm. So what is the product on offer this year for, for sale? For this year they have the Laneige water sleeping mask which right. I heard is magical That's um, right. and it's on sale in major departmental stores uh, um, in Klang Valley or even outside right. um, and for 110 ringgit um, per container of water sleeping mask 10 ringgit of it will be channeled towards the fundraising for the six uh, rainwater harvesting systems that we're going to install in the six homes. Right. So okay. the campaign started uh, on May 1st. Mm -hmm. It will end in July 31st. I so see. we highly encourage anyone who feel like they would like to com contribute, even though it's passively. Um, every 10 ringgit uh, of um, contribution makes a big difference in terms of what we can do to their homes. Absolutely. So yeah. we've got the products on display right here in the studio. Mm -hmm. So if the camera can pan in, that's the product right there. So it's basically, it's a jar mm -hmm. and it's a sleeping mask. Yes, you use right. it at night after okay. you're done. Uh, from your long day and uh, leave it on and uh, wake up fresh right. the next morning. Okay, so basically <laughs> it contains water, pure water, one of the most essential ingredients. Yes, and I think this is one of Laneige's um, top selling items as well. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. especially because Laneige is one of the most popular Korean brands locally. Yes. Right, yeah. okay, wonderful. Now um, let's talk about um, the children's homes which um, will be benefiting from this year's efforts between mm -hmm. Mungo and Laneige. Right, um, so we have selected six homes and how we went about selecting it was similar process as last year. Um, the first question we would normally um, ask when we approach the homes is, Ha have they experienced any difficulties during the water crisis? Right, okay, um, first question. Right, right. Um, one is we needed to make sure that um, this system would make a difference in your That's home. Right. And number two, um, they were having um, challenges dealing with you know water rationing and so forth. Right. Um, and number two was also we needed to evaluate in terms of how their homes were set up um, for for the rainwater harvesting systems, it's mainly used um, for non-potable uh, purposes. Meaning, it's not meant for drinking. It's not meant for what for use on your body. Right. It's mainly for uh, to be channeled to uh, the washrooms. Okay. Could be for kitchen use mm -hmm. as long as you're not drinking it from the kitchen tap. Right. Um, garden use or in just general washing. Right. Um, Household activities. purposes. All the yeah. miscellaneous things. Yeah. Okay. Because rainwater in general is just too acidic and it's not chlorinated, it's not treated. That's so right, we that's right. highly recommend people not to consume it or put it on their body. Um, so um, we, we, my, my, my head coordinator had a field day coming up with all the kind of questions. One is we needed to make sure the homes would also appreciate the system. Right. And number two, naturally. We, yeah, and we actually had to identify, we actually had to do field work and go to the homes to kind of identify which part of their structure uh, is suitable to have the rainwater installed. So washrooms are normally the key area. And then we had to look at, for instance, the surface of the roof to make sure that um, right. it allows us to capture a, a huge amount of rainwater. Right, also whether it's stable enough to support. Yeah, okay. definitely. Um, so these, these six homes um, fulfilled all these criteria. Fulfilled all these cri okay, criteria. Wonderful. And what we did also together with the Laneige was um, educate the beneficiaries, the children that were in these homes, oh, oh about right. what they're about to get. Oh, that's and very interesting. Um, so how did that go? And it how went did really you organize that? Actually, that? was to my surprise. Uh -huh. Like, I think the hardest people to train on this planet are just old adults. Because uh, when you <laughs> I tell, would have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> when you tell the kids yeah. about the rainwater harvesting systems through a bit of science, you know, through a bit of uh, basic things that they learned in school 
and they understand it and mm. they get it. So the concept's easy to absorb, unlike unlike yeah. us, old habits die. Yeah. High. So yeah. and we're probably more resistant to new things. True. And so what we did was we ran a little competition among okay. all the six homes to kind of test their knowledge about how much they knew about rainwater harvesting systems, oh, number interesting. one. Right. And number two, we made it a competition because we wanted them to step up and be confident and be able to present and tell people what they were going to have in their homes. Right. And Laneige was very kind enough to um, contribute some cash prizes. And this cash, uh, the winning home, um, had cash prizes to actually contribute back to the home as well. Oh, wonderful! But ne ne never, nonetheless, all of them were winners because they all did fantastic presentations. You know, some exactly. did it in sing-song style, some did it in oh, right. poetry, and bring out all the creativity. Out, yeah, right. And you can tell all of them more or less have the basic knowledge of understanding what the system is and how it works and how it benefits their homes later. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so we'll cut quickly to the commercial sure. and when we're back, we'll actually be talking more about this awesome collaboration between Laneige as well as Mungo. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. Today, a daily lifestyle morning variety talk show that touches on current topics in Malaysia and around the world. Also featuring compact interviews with guests from various backgrounds. Don't forget to tune in to Channel 502 live from Mondays to Fridays. Back to the nation. You're with me, Tamina Kauzji, in our studios here at Banama, together with Yasmin Rashid, chairperson of Mungo, and we have been talking about the rainwater harvesting system. Hi. Hi again. <laughs> All right, Yasmin. So um, let's go a little bit more in depth about the rainwater harvesting system itself. Can you tell us what are some of the benefits of rainwater harvesting? Well, um, maybe a bit of background. Uh, yes, I think please. Malaysians are very um, blessed. Um, for having so much rain and for having basically um, cheap access to water. That's right, almost daily yeah. access to water. And our water, I would say, compared to a lot more third world countries, um, substantially better in quality right. and treated well. Uh, but having said that, um, there are many components of how we use water at home where we rely too much on pipe water. Uh, and pipe water would mean water that has been uh, extracted from rivers. 80% of our water comes from rivers. And then gone through this extensive treatment proce process mm. to be piped to a house. Yet we flush it down. True. Yet we yet waste it. We an waste An incredible it. amount. Right. Yes. And rainwater is a free resource. It's an easy resource. And for a country that has 3,000 millimeters of rain a year, um, it's we're, we're quite blessed and very lucky. That's right. Um, so rainwater is quite underutilized um, and less captured uh, to fulfill our other needs. Right. And in in a cityscape like Kuala Lumpur, for instance, when you have more um, grounded areas actually cemented, making way for development, um, so. Rain traditionally or um, 
has always been absorbed by the soil, yes. kept in the soil, and slowly released and filtered by the soil and go back, goes back to the river. That's right. It's That's the natural cycle of things. Yeah. Yes. However, in major cities, because of our pathways that are just too much that are, of it are cemented, so the water doesn't really have time to get absorbed to the ground, and uh, what we call storm water, and it ends up flowing from little drains to bigger drains. And in most cases, it's actually one of the reasons why we have these, we experience flash flood floods in the That's city. Right. Um, not enough uh, grass areas to actually capture the rain. Exactly. And so. it has caused a lot of inconvenience. True. Imagine if we could actually capture this huge amount of excess free yeah, water. Rain going to waste. We may be able to reduce the incidence or the severity of flash floods. And number two, we may actually have a backup source of water somewhere. True. So homes, uh, one example of how that area can act as like a bowl. Yeah, your own you can, water catchment yeah, area. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Can you imagine the entire Klang Valley That's if true. all developments are actually... I, I think we have a regulation that new buildings should have rainwater harvesting systems. True. But it's all, it'll be interesting to see how older buildings retrofit these ideas as mm. well. And if each building um, takes social responsibility That's true. and look at how they can tap into these free resources for weather, for usage in the toilet flush systems and all that, I believe like out of four or eight million people that dwell in KL, right. we could actually substantially reduce um, the severity of flash floods in the city. That's right. So and perhaps even you know um, ease the burden of the almost annual water shortages that we have. Yeah. Malaysians are often puzzled with that. Of course, on one hand, it's like we have too much rain. You know, yeah. don't go out in the rain. Yeah. And on the other hand, our taps are dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes. It's extreme ends. Exactly. But it's also not something new. Um, no, it has been happening progressively over yeah. the years as development goes hand in yeah. hand. Um, something we can try to avoid and mm -hmm. really um, not something extremely high tech if you look at how it works. That's I do right. know of some uh, condominium and property developers who have gone to extent of making sure that, for instance, uh, the rooftop captures rainwater that feeds to the watering system yes. in the garden of the condominium. That's so right. this actually helps save a lot of money mm. uh, and it's convenient. I, for one, grew up in a small town of Ipo and I remember whenever it rains heavily, my grandmother will be getting all her grandchildren out right. of their pail or bucket mm -hmm. and just putting it outside to collect oh, yes, rainwater. Because for site. her, it's True. like, why waste these resources? I can use it for watering my plants or even just True. washing the porch, you know? Yeah, true enough. And I think it's something which many people, even urbanites, do on a small scale level. Mm -hmm. Either out of necessity because you don't have access to, you know, water for all your non-portable needs or just because people are getting more, you know, aware. Yeah, I just hope that um, this old habit that we used to have that, that I feel is very sustainable comes back uh, as a new trend uh, mm -hmm. to the new generation now. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So the rainwater harvesting system itself, the one which is in use in collaboration with Mungo and Lanish, um, how is it? How does it differ in essence from the other more commercial, commercially available systems of the same type? Well, the first thing that's really obvious is the price. Okay, um, right. We use a much, much cheaper system and one that has very, very uh, little need for maintenance. Okay. Um, oh, so we, we found a, a partner uh, uh, from Fiberlink mm -hmm. who actually customized mm -hmm. these tanks. Um, and um, and um, how large are the tanks, um, if I may? I believe. Um, it comes in various sizes right. and that, that's how we customize the needs for these homes. So depending on what the roof structure are for these homes, right. um, they can, it can come with one tank which is about 120 to 200 liters. Okay. And if, for instance, if the home has a bigger roof um, area, surface right. area, which means it's a bigger catchment area, True. Um, the tanks can actually be stacked up modularly. Ah, so they can actually okay. co collect more than the... A tank, a top yeah. tank. Okay, so right. these are all customized to the homes and we also understand, like I think one of the homes has about 90 often, so right, you can imagine residents. how their usage right. is. Absolutely. So it easily 90 flushes a day, easily. minimum. Minimum, right. That's right. Um, so some of these homes will get uh, more tanks, 
okay. all the smaller homes will get um, tanks that are appropriate to the size of their homes. True enough. Um, and this system, like I mentioned, is does not work on electric pumps. That's right. Um, so they are Non-mechanized. very uh, more high tech systems, which will cost you between a range of twenty five to thirty thousand ringgit. Right per unit. Yeah, okay. and it depends if you want say. Um, your system to provide water to all the toilets in your home, okay. then you can imagine the piping is a bit more extensive. That's true, a little bit more complicated. Yeah, so in our case, we're just retrofitting it to their home. So ah. there's really no major, no, no need to hack walls, no need to do all no that. Um, however, one key thing is to ensure that the roof structure is solid and stable. That's right. And naturally. that it has the right gutter system. Because gutter system is important because when the rain falls on um, the roof structure, right. it needs to be collected and channeled to the tank uh, properly and appropriately yeah so okay. that would be one big thing that we really need to look at in terms of engineering to make sure that collection is as efficient as possible naturally um, and then it will all feed to the tank right okay. yeah for those who want to learn more about rainwater harvesting like I, I have a small system at home uh, which okay. is collecting water right oh, wow. now all right and, uh, and uh, I did it yeah we had a we hired a contractor and I showed him a YouTube video which I really liked. Okay. And I said I just wanted something simple okay. and I got the materials myself. I it's see. just a water drum. Okay. And um, I figured out basically how my gutter system works because I think in most modern houses, mm-hmm. the gutter system is very well done because yes, you don't see rain coming out down your roof, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, it's sort of. However, just everything flows by. to the drain. True. Uh, and that's when you see, like, oh my God, this is actually a huge amount of water that my roof is capturing. That's true. So what I did was just cut the gutter system, mm-hmm. channel it to a water drum, right. put a little pipe faucet in it. Oh, I see. And okay. I can um, take the water out for use for watering my plants or mm. even just washing my car. Right, so whatever it is that you like. Yeah. And uh, how long have you personally been using the system? Oh, just a couple of months ago, not, oh, not too long. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, because it's a DIY thing, so it, it's a little yes. bit more intensive when you have to, you know, That's right. figure you need out to organize how to do it and all of that. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. But it's fun, you know. I get my children involved. I get my husband involved, and exactly. I think it's a nice way to learn about how your home operates as well. Exactly, and I think the key point is that not just with your children, but also with the orphanages, you're informing like a whole new generation about how these things work. Yeah, we're yeah. hoping that this would bring back the necessary skills or knowledge and awareness and how do you run or manage your life or home more sustainably. That's true yeah. and that's the main idea behind it because I think this is wonderful and we hope that a lot of Malaysians out there watching this right now will actually consider having this system installed in their own yeah. homes. I think that's one of the points of our collaboration in, in this CSR initiative with Laneige Malaysia is also for people to come and observe how this is done because right. they can easily do it of course and fundraising for it would be a challenge but even if you're talking about sing- single homeowners, that's right, um, individuals themselves. Yeah, yeah. Come, come to some of the homes we have done. Come and observe what we'll be doing in August right. uh, when we're installing it. Um, That's learn right. a little bit of engineering, which is not really uh, rocket science. Yeah, nothing too high tech, but something that is just mm. basic logic and knowledge. Yeah, and right. uh, we encourage more Malaysians to, to pick up this knowledge and see whether you can implement it at home. Because mm. um, I believe if... If, say, your house or my house can, say, reduce 100 litres of water being flushed down the drain, exactly. multiply that by 4 million homes, that's millions and millions of litres, millions, millions which we of can reduce, that's that right. ends up flooding KL. Exactly. Yeah. And not just that, then hopefully someday in the future we won't have our sudden water shortages anymore. Yes, yeah, definitely. And it's, it's, a, horrible, it's a horrible experience to have gone through the water crisis exactly. as well. Exactly, yeah. true enough. All right, so we'll cut quickly to the break mm-hmm. and when we're back, we'll be chatting still with Yasmin Rashid about the benefits of installing water harvesting systems. Stay with us. Terdapat pembayaran GST bermula 1 Mei 2015 bagi tempoh bercukai bulanan dan 1 Julai 2015 bagi tempoh bercukai setiap 3 bulan sekali. Sekiranya tempoh bercukai anda setiap 3 bulan, tempoh bercukai pertama anda mungkin... Pastikan tempoh bercukai pertama anda sama seperti di surat kelulusan pendaftaran GST. Pembayaran GST boleh dibuat melalui tiga cara. Pertama, online portal GST, gst.customs.gov.my. Log masuk ke akaun TAP dan ikuti proses seterusnya. Kedua, melalui bank terpilih. 
Ketiga, melalui pos kepada pusat pemprosesan GST. Poskan cek dan bocor barang kepada. Ingat, sila cetak resit pengesahan untuk simpanan dan rujukan. Kegagalan anda menghantar penyata dan membuat pembayaran GST boleh dikenakan. Jalankan tanggungjawab anda sebagai pembayar juga. Halo apa kabar pemirsa, salam dari Jakarta. Sebuah program kerjasama kantor berita Indonesia Antara dengan kantor berita Malaysia bernama Kembali Hadir Menjumpai Anda. isu semasa jadi saluran pelbagai suara segalanya baru dan benar di Twitter bernama TV Welcome back to The Nation. You're with me, Tamina Kauzji, and our studio guest for today, Yasmin Rashid, Chairperson of Mungo, Malaysian Environmental NGOs. Right, Yasmin. Hi. Hi. So as we were saying, um, basically the rainwater harvesting system, this is going to be the second year which Mungo is collaborating with Lanish. Correct. Tell us a little bit about um, the experience of actually installing and mm -hmm. getting three of these systems running last year in three different homes. Yeah. Uh, well, last year uh, was our first time experiencing this collaboration with Lanish. And uh, we installed it in three homes within the uh, uh, Klang Valley area. Um, and uh, one, two of the homes actually had a system efficiency of 30%. And what oh, that see. means is mm -hmm. they actually reduce uh, their reliance on pipe water by 30%. Ah, all right. Um, but of course, in terms of dollars and cents, if you they, the, the most of the homes are in Slango, and you know in Slango they get a certain amount of free water. That's so in right. terms of dollars and cents, um, it probably wasn't much, mm -hmm. uh, probably 10 ringgit or so. But what was big in terms of the environmental impact was the, the hundreds of liters that was saved. That's right. Um, that, that they used on, on pipe water. So, um, and this system has uh, a maximum efficiency rate of 30 to 35%. So we were quite happy last year that two of the homes actually achieved that rate. Right. And uh, we hope that, of course, after installation in August this year, we hope to do a little bit of research and monitoring to make sure we are aware uh, um, of how efficient these new systems are as well uh, ah. in this year's homes. That's so right. we normally do a monitoring and evaluation. Um, so that we have hard data as right, well to refer back to to refer well. back to uh, the success of the system and also to i guess it's also a way to lobby mm -hmm. for Absolutely. people to um, think of the system as an option to have in your homes that's true because yeah. the awareness is most key over here i yeah. think of course you know good things need to be done over a long period of time it's incremental you know? i think yeah yes. so you would see that benefits happening over a longer period of time right okay yeah. sounds good now um which are the six homes which are going to benefit from this oh. year's drive and collection and all the efforts that yeah. both Lanesh and mungo has been putting in yeah so the six homes uh, range from homes that are based in Taling Jaya, KL, and all the way out in Rawang. And mm -hmm. they are Rumah Kids, okay. Rumah Amal, Cahaya, Tengku, Ampuan, and Rahima, uh, also known as Rekta, Rumah right. Bakti, Rumah Kebajikan, Anbu Ilam, Pertubuhan Kebajikan, Esan, Ashako, Apakeas, and also finally Rainbow Home. Right. Um, and they range from, each home range from having as little as 30 to 40 beneficiaries to okay. as high as 90 to 100 beneficiaries. Right, so all sizes and ranges of all homes sizes, as well. All sizes, um, all um, different backgrounds as well. You know, some That's some right. are Muslim uh, homes and some are Christian mm -hmm. and so forth. So we wanted to make it very muhiba and make yes, sure exactly. we, we benefit uh, children all of all faiths and all backgrounds. That's right. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Now, um, basically, um, Mungo as well as Lanish will be on the ground ensuring that the installations um, get off 
and this will be happening in August, you in said? In August. Right. So this campaign will end July 31st. Right. Um, we encourage anyone out there mm -hmm. um, to check out the Laneige counters that are in major departmental stores. And um, mm -hmm. your 10 ringgit contribution means a lot to us and actually can help make a big difference into the lives of the, the orphans that are in these homes. Um, and number two is also uh, come August, we will be installing uh, the rainwater harvesting systems. That's right. um, we'll also be calling for volunteers, yes. whoever who would like to spend time with us. Um, maybe come up with activities or programs to enrich or enhance mm -hmm. um, the knowledge of the beneficiaries of these homes. Right. Um, like last year, we had lots of volunteers from university students oh, all okay. up to That's wonderful. even uh, people in the corporate world that came right. and did their part. Because um, okay. there's always something you can assist with. So last year, when we had some volunteers who came to one of the homes and saw the bad condition of how the fence was around the home right. and they took it to their own responsibility that they're going to fix the fence and which they did. Okay. Um, so we oh, allow... That's a true spirit of like it's uh, sort of a gotong royong overall yeah, for the entire and, home. And everyone has different styles of volunteering yes. and different everyone, specialties. Some are shy and some are not too shy mm -hmm. so we allow volunteers to customize how they want to have their volunteering experience. Right. Some people would rather come and read books or maybe host a movie screening, cartoon screening for the kids okay. right. and actually maybe someone will run some games. So mm -hmm. we, we welcome these kind of ideas. Okay. Uh, we need as many volunteers as we, we can. There's right. six homes. Um, installations will be done in various homes during different periods. So we encourage you to join our Facebook group, um, Mango's Facebook group, mm -hmm. um, to just uh, be informed of right. our um, whereabouts. To updated with the yeah, activities. Yeah, and right. we will be calling for volunteers uh, on right. social media. On so social stay media. Stay tuned, yeah. Okay, so, me so make sure you go ahead and you find Mengo, which is the Malaysian Environmental NGOs mm -hmm. Association, because they will actually be able to tell you where you can mm -hmm. show up if you want to donate your time or your services. Right. Right. Okay, now, um, Volunteering aside, typically how long does it take, Yasmin, for these um, water, um, for the rainwater harvesting system to be installed and up and running from start to um, finish? I think if we take one home, it should probably take less than a week okay, to get it all. Week. Yeah, it really depends on when uh, how, how the roof structure is, like I mentioned, in gutter systems. Ah, so I see. I think some of the homes are, are really old in terms of how it w when it was constructed. Right, architecturally. So, yeah, okay. so we probably need to look at um, maybe redoing some of the gutter systems mm. and looking at how the plumbing works in that home. Right. Um, if that has minimal uh, intervention from us, mm -hmm. then the system takes definitely less than a week to be up and running. Mm, um, right. The next big, uh, big thing to really look forward to is when will it rain so that okay. we can actually see it collecting. That's right. <laughs> that, that must be an exciting moment for I know. the children I can't homes. wait for it to rain and see how uh, right. efficient the systems are as well. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about uh, one of the previous homes where you have installed the rainwater harvesting system? What was it like for them when it first rained and their system first operated? I believe um, I believe it wasn't even noticeable for many of the homes because right. like for okay. For I think for Trinity Home, it was mainly for use in the wash uh, washrooms. Okay. Right. So um, I, I guess the kids don't even know whether they were flushing rainwater or not because right. it, it's really not that obvious and it yeah, doesn't really right. stick out. It's not an eyesore or anything like that. And I think we uh, we actually had a little pipe where because they all go to school and yes, they're using pipe right. water to wash the school shoes. So with okay. this, they actually now have to just use rainwater. Ah, um, right, collected so rainwater. Yeah, so I think as a, as a user, it's not meant to give you that out of this world experience. It's yeah, it's just not a shocking change, it's just a shift. Yeah, right. and if, and this is the beauty of the system, it mm -hmm. comes with a little automatic valve. I if see, right. If the rainwater is used already, okay. that's when the pipe water gets kicked in. Ah, so um, the, as a user, um, you probably won't even feel that you're out of water because right. as, as soon as the rainwater harvesting tank is done, mm -hmm. um, the pipe water part will come and kick in right. and, and you can use it uh, normally. So it's pretty seamless. It is. Yeah, it so is. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, it's not only smart enough that it only collects the rainwater after the first five, ten minutes, but it also makes sure you 
have a constant supply. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Ideally, um, for any new property that you know, any new 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 development, most of the rainwater uh, capturing system is under the structure of the home. Right. Because yes. Because it collects more. That's true. Um, and can be easily pumped up to various parts of the homes. Right. But because these homes are already being built, so we have to That's make true. do by relying on the roof the instead. The external sort yeah. of system. Right. Yeah. Which is should be just as efficient because the roof, as you mentioned, is a huge catchment mm -hmm. area. Except um, it's limited by where we could pipe it to. I see. So if it's under your home, uh, and when you're, you're building your home from scratch, you can right, actually start thinking about up. where you want your plumbing system to work. Right. So I think in more modern homes, we hope, you know, um, if you're building your own home anytime right. soon, do think about the benefits of mm. having a, a, a proper rainwater harvesting system. Right. So in a way, we're actually, we're going back to the old ways, as modern as we get. Yes. Yeah, we're doing what thing. we can so that we can alleviate the burden of these homes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I do think that this is not just something for the homes, but for all homeowners in Malaysia mm -hmm. to consider. Definitely. It all works right. perfectly in schools as well. In schools as schools well. Schools has a huge right. area to collect rain. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I can imagine if school roofs started instituting all of this. Yeah. Right, I, right. I see a lot of schools doing that uh, lately as well mm. um, as a way to reduce uh, reliance on pipe water and I think right. because you use it for sports and everything and kids will be doing a lot exactly. of washing and That's watering right. so the garden. a lot of water wastage that yeah. goes into it. And it benefits the schools. Yes, yeah. true enough. And at the same time teaches the new generation about, you know, some civic responsibility yes, too. definitely. Right. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Sounds good. Now, um, let's see. So, um, Mungo has been helping out with, uh, you know, um, making sure that some of the rainwater harvesting system gets instituted into the homes and the orphanages of the needy. Mm. What about um, any other efforts that you've been involved in to sort of spread the message about the rainwater harvesting? Um, we are also working closely with another uh, foundation right. to also um, uh, do more, install more rainwater harvesting systems. And what we have done is we realized that awareness level is quite low or I see or right. maybe we're just ignorant so we are now producing communication materials to um, educate more general Malaysians about what right. it is what it's about in fact I think we've just done a uh, poster which is can be downloadable uh, off our website anytime especially for teachers who want to use it as teaching resources oh wonderful yeah okay. and they can print it out and maybe use it for classroom activities or right. even just to inform the students and we will probably be doing more talks um, to communities right. about our efforts in um, in our mandate to probably uh, advocate right for uh, the system and also just to I guess remind Malaysians about being mindful about how you use water and to be prepared in times right. of a water crisis. Yeah, I, I think, think that's many the of main us were caught off guard. Very much off guard. There yeah. was a lot of frustration, I remember, amongst most homeowners. Yeah, that's I remember right. a lot of people came to my house to use, right, to okay. collect water in there and then oh, bring it home because my place was least affected. I see, and that's I, right. I can, I can feel them, you know, I mean, that's when you true. have babies. Exactly, uh, young you ones You need home. water, you need clean water. Absolutely, it's not know? an option. Yeah. That's right. So I can see the despair and in, in, in what they've experienced. That's right. Um, so for anyone wanting to download the PDF files or anything, um, the website for Mungo is? Uh, Mango.org. Mm -hmm. um, they can log on. In fact, um, we, we, we could probably go into the tab called resources. And right. once our communication materials are ready, we hope more Malaysians out there would feel free to use it whether you want to educate your children at home or educate your staff in your office that's right uh, feel free to use this materials it's free for all okay that's yeah. great so just remember www.mengo.org if you want to check out the website and mm -hmm. have a look at all the publicity and media materials that they have and also at the same time don't forget to go and check out any of the lineage counters all around the Klang Valley and Malaysia and make sure you get your waterful sleeping mask mm -hmm. we're going to take a quick commercial break but we'll be back right after stay with us
Welcome back to The Nation. You're with me, Tamina Kazji, and our special guest in the studio today, Yasmin Rashid from Munyo, which is the Malaysian um, Environmental NGOs, speaking about the collaboration for rainwater harvesting systems. Mm -hmm. Right, Yasmin. So, as you were saying, um, the actual rainwater harvesting system that is in use mm -hmm. by Mungo as well as La Niche for these homes, mm -hmm. it costs less than around 10,000 ringgit. Yes. Right. Um, so it's fairly affordable. That's right. Um, and I believe if, uh, like I said, if the house roof structure infrastructure wise is actually ideal, right. um, it could actually cost less than that as well. So between five to even four thousand ringgit. Oh right. Yeah. So it really so varies depending yeah. on the actual yeah. logistics. The additional cost comes from the engineering and piping works. Um, but like I said, newer homes probably have less uh, issues related to piping and gutter systems. That's right. So, but we're targeting at about ten thousand ringgit, and if you are successful in raising um, more, we would probably um, do more to the, for the homes in right. terms of either fixing other areas of the home or maybe doing enrichment programs for the beneficiaries in these homes. Okay, right. So yeah. it's more of an overall sort of holistic look at the mm -hmm. home and the condition. Yeah, because right. some homes. You know, they they take a they take time to fundraise as well. So last year, um, we actually repaired uh, quite a lot of items in the homes that were not related to the rainwater harvesting system. Like I, see. I think one home had a roof that collapsed, okay, so we right. fixed that part back, and right. then they had um, they had certain part within their homes where there were no cupboards and so forth. So whatever that we could support and with the help of the volunteers we try to spruce everything up nicely for their homes. Right, but ultimately for example fixing the roof also helps with the rainwater harvesting system yes. because that's essential for the catchment. Definitely, yes, you right. need a strong roof. <laughs> okay, absolutely. So as you were saying, um, if you could just explain to me quite simply uh, what the system is based on this little adorable mock-up model that yeah, we have here. Yeah, thank you to the Mango team for doing this. Oh, yes, so we did a little uh, miniature version of this VI right. and we brought the system to the homes to actually okay. um, give them a macro perspective to how it works. So if you look here on our left, this would be um, representative of a roof structure. Right, the roofing. Um, yep, right. and the roof structure would have what you call gutter systems right at the back. Right, um, so instead of the gutter being at the bottom, actually it has the guttering at the, the top. top. Yeah. Okay. So, so once you have a proper gutter system and you have one water outlet, that main water outlet would be channeled to a little blue box here which represents the rainwater harvesting tank. Right, so that's the catchment itself. Right. Okay. So the catchment, the storage area right and like I mentioned earlier the first five ten minutes of rainwater will be flushed out to the drain because okay. we just want to get rid of any debris or That's any right. particles in Anything there harmful in yeah it, yes. so we want to try to get as much um, clean rainwater inside the tank that's true okay. and then later on through gravity system is what will be pumped into your washrooms ah, I see. for your okay. flush uh, mainly for flush Yes, principally um, for the, f for the yeah. purpose of flushing so because that's, I think, the easiest non-portable resource. Yes, yeah. and also you won't be putting it in your mouth or anything like that, so it normally goes into the toilet bowl. That's right, okay. <laughs> and excess water depends on the homes and how ah, okay. much water they use. Mm -hmm. um, we can also do a separate piping to connect it to a, a tap which I they see. can use to actually water their gardens and right. so forth. So meaning which they have two uses, two principal uses for the water instead of just channeling it for flushes. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, some people, I mean, it depends if they have a van or a vehicle in their homes, which, you know, for transportation, they can also use it to wash their vehicles as well. I see, right, right. School shoes, um, you know, things that don't really, would not, you know, we would, would, would minimize body contact. Right, okay. Yeah. So basically that this is one way in which the homes can choose to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And the compost bin over there? Oh, the compost bin, we just put it in there because ideally, if possible, the entire home um, right. compost their organic waste. And we ah. also have three recycling bins in there. Oh, right. Um, we okay. hope to actually go down there if, if they are interested to learn additionally about managing an orphanage sustainably. That's we would right. love to actually teach them how to compost and recycle. Oh, absolutely. We actually do that in our own office as well. Okay. All our food waste is composted in the bin outside our office. Which is great. Yeah. So we feel like if we can do it, 
Um, yes, and it's everybody really no should hassle. do it. And it. Really, everyone should be really doing exactly. it. Exactly, well. especially with the new um, rulings that you know all garbage actually needs Had to be separated. Separated in September. Yeah, that's right. So I think. Uh, it's a we good need to start preparing to ourselves mentally and physically how to, you know, practice the three R's as a by the way kind of. Right. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful indeed. So it looks like a really compact, convenient and easy to adapt to yes, system. Definitely. Right. Um, so we hope this would be um, encouraging for other Malaysians to check out what we have done. Absolutely. Um, if you want to contribute easily, you can get a water sleeping mask. That's right. Alternatively, we hope that we can convince you to actually consider um, doing these minor retrofittings in your home as well. I mean, exactly. I, I guess the old bucket always works. That's but, true, um, and we don't still forget, see it. You yeah, know, but don't mom's forget. bringing out the buckets and putting them <laughs> in the drain. Don't forget yeah. you've got an amazing catchment area in each of your homes. And That's right. We can so much capture and reduce the amount of water that goes into our waterways. Exactly. Um, we will all be contributing to reducing our burden um, 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 and causing flash floods in exactly. the city. Exactly. And I think it's high time we all did this since, you know, the water shortage issue is only going to grow exponentially. Yeah. So if, um, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an amazing mathematician, but if one liter can be prevented from going to the drain a day times 28 million Malaysians, 28 million liters of water. That's right. Which is actually collectively very significant. True enough. So true um, enough. we hope more homes would think about this. Uh, if you're a housewife, if you're, that's right. Um, if you've got a handy dandy man as a husband, this is really effortless and oh very yes. simple to do. That would be an excellent DIY project. <laughs> Definitely of for a family as well. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Yasmin. Thank you for having me, Zamina. Not at all. It's been our pleasure here at Bernama. So for all of you out there, especially ladies, if you're looking for a awesome new sleeping mask well look no further you've got the water <laughs> sleeping mask by Laniche and you now you know that you will be doing some good something for the greater good by helping out these six different homes which Mungo as well as Laniche in collaboration is helping out with installing the rainwater harvesting systems we hope you've learned as much as we have today so thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again next time